Raila Odinga has officially called off his seven-day vigil around the Supreme Court of Kenya and all IEBC offices nationwide. Reason why? Public disinterest. Now, here's the statement from his secretariat. It should be on your screen right now. And I quote, Upon further consideration, acting on the advice of our council and party leadership, the Azimiolo Moja coalition members have been advised to stay calm, follow the proceedings of the apex court, and not necessarily through the staging of vigils. Our supporters are advised to watch the proceedings of the Supreme Court from the comfort of their homes when the court commences hearings. An earlier statement asking our supporters to join the leadership for a church service still holds. Now, the reason why these vigils failed is because of public disinterest. Now, we'll sample together just a few tweets, two or three, so that you can get a sense of what Kenyans are thinking about this particular issue of people absconding their livelihoods for the sake of seven-day vigils around the Supreme Court. So, Billy the Viper Droid is saying, As a sensible Kenyan, I urge you to fight poverty and high cost of living. Mandamano to achieve wild beasts. We've been through hard already. Gendo Mbugwa is saying, Watu wa maandamano laleni mapema? It's going to be a long week. Kama huna chakula, don't worry. Lunch will be served by the deep state. And the last one is from Jaloka. He's saying, Which stage have you reached? Maandamano? Supreme Court? Boycotting Safaricom and Brookside? Setting up a pay bill for a billionaire to milk his cows? Seceding? Hand cheeth? or stating the 2027 Baba the Sixth race, how far? So it's quite clear that the apex reason why these vigils were called off is public disinterest. It is coming at a time when Unga is going for 230, bread is 60, everything is on the rise. There are people who, if they don't go to work for a single day, they will not eat that day. They are living hand to mouth. So most Kenyans are saying we are done. None of us is going for this mandamano, and the only way people will go is if they are paid. If they are paid, they'll go. But other than that, there's been a total disinterest nationwide. Now, before we get into the second reason why these vigils were called off nationwide, if you're here for the first time, just hit the subscribe button. If you're watching from a different platform, say maybe Telegram, WhatsApp, Facebook, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula. I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton more content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the second reason for calling off these vigils is that Raila Odinga got a direct phone call from the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. Now, this call happened two to three days there about before the press release for these vigils, but it still was able to sway Raila Odinga because part of the things that he discussed with the United Nations Secretary General was dealing with terrorism and ensuring regional stability. So how can you come from such an important call with such an important person, someone who can pick up the phone and call Joe Biden or Vladimir Putin, and they're all going to pick up and listen to him? Then two, three days later, you organize vigils, which could turn to Mandamano. So this phone call really made Ray Laudinga take a step back, and his secretariat basically said, hey, we're calling off these activities, don't show up. Because the international community is starting to look at Raila Odinga from a very different scope. A very different scope. I even saw the Economic Freedom Fighters CIC, the Commander-in-Chief, uh, Julius Malima. He came out and just said, hey, Raila Odinga, accept the results. Stop getting in this habit of rejecting results and slowing down progress in your country. He really said it. We call on Mr. Raila Odinga to accept the election outcome and not form part of a tradition of causing instability and uncertainty on African governance. Mr. Odinga must humble himself and form part of government that will address the challenges confronting the people of Kenya and not allow history to remember him as an individual who was disparate for power at the cost of the progress of his nation. Now, that was just the first of many. Now the United Nations Secretary General is calling Raila Odinga personally just to talk about stability that does not come by mere coincidence. And I've noticed that he did not call William Ruto. He did not call George Wajakoya. He did not call Waihiga Mwaure. I have not even seen any reports that he called President Uru Kenyatta. He specifically called Raila Odinga. Why is that the case? Because they are suspecting that he could be the one to start these mandamanos and things like those. 
And you even remember prior to the election, the United Nations issued a travel advisory to its citizens from traveling to Kisumu. So guys in the international community are starting to look at Raila Odinga from a different scope, and he does not want to match whatever it is they are viewing him as. If he starts the mandamanos, at this point now even the entire world will say, hey, we saw it coming. Julius Malima talked about it. The United Nations Secretary General has called to prevent such things by getting assurances from Raila Odinga and so on and so forth. So this is the reasons why we are seeing these uh, vigils being called off nationwide. But I really love to hear your comment. Perhaps you are purview to a different school of thought on this particular matter, and I'd really love to read your comments. So just drop them down below. And also, if you're here for the first time, go on and hit the subscribe button. If you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula. I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton more content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Zipporah Kamau, a good friend of this platform. Thank you so much for keeping us going. Now, as I end the video, let's listen into the dream. Many of you have asked me what's next for this channel and what we can do to make it bigger and better. Today, I would like to answer that question. On the short term, I intend to continue keeping you abreast on all matters politics. But on the long term, it's my dream to have this turn into a full-on political podcast where we'll do three things. Number one, analyze governments, political ideas, policies, trends, and foreign relations. Number two, we hope to interview politicians from any and all dockets of public service, be it governors, senators, members of parliament, and even MCAs with the aim of dissecting their policies and presenting you the opportunity to hear from your local leaders and to question them directly. Number three, I intend to host some of you who are passionate about politics and would like to have a platform where you can share your opinions freely without necessarily being a household name. However, to achieve all this, we'll need a couple of things. We'll need microphones, cameras, lighting, computers, editing software, and mixers. And hopefully, by the grace of God, when it's all said and done, we're going to have something that looks like this, or this, or even this. But as we all know, Rome wasn't built in a day, so we'll start off with what we have and build upon that foundation as time goes by. So if you'd like to chip in towards this dream, feel free to wire in your donation through M-Pesa number 011 53829 Zero zero, or bank account number zero one one zero eight five seven six five nine three nine zero zero. Also, there's an interesting concept that I would like us to borrow. On the walls of Saint Michael's Golden Domed Monastery in Kiev, there's around four thousand five hundred portraits of fallen soldiers who died defending Ukraine from the invading army of Russia's Vladimir Putin. So I also intend to keep and maintain a wall at the podcast studio with the names and images of everybody who made it happen. It's kind of like my own small way of honoring those who chipped in and also so that everybody who walks into that studio, they don't take it for granted. They get to know that, hey, you see all these images up here? These are the guys who made it happen. So it's not a self-made story. It's a more of a people's project, if you will. So once again, thank you for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to have you. Do have yourself a great day. Adios.